I make sure Southside eat. Wait, wait, wait. It's MG the future or something. Let me just share my links, man. I'm not gonna hold you today. You catch this on the replay, I appreciate you. Your time, your efforts, your support. Gang, gang, gang. It's MG the future, you know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. I don't either, so don't, don't take it. No, you're not left out or nothing. One day I'll get this right. One day we'll answer these questions once and for all. This will be the end of all that nonsense. Let's skip the ad, baby. They share that link, baby. Oh, yeah. I share it to Twitter. I shared it to Twitter. Sharing links to Twitter. Share my links, links to Twitter. Sharing all my links on Twitter. Sharing all my links, links to Twitter. Hey, why I gotta share my own link for? I should join an MCN so I can get more. Follow us, listen to us, watch us, click, click. Get that money, YouTube, dip dip, hey, all up and in my pudding, hey, I'm a little bit of a hip and 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 a Got a few people in the room. We can give a few more seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the overfill fill in. You feel me? I'm gonna let the overfill overfill. You feel me? Chlorophyll. No Cosby though. You feel me? Hey. Dun, 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 dun. Bims is in the building. I'm seeing people in the chat. Hold on. She can be my option in my range. 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 We can get it on the night. What? If you feeling like, feeling like what? You can be my main chick. Like a main chick. I can make the main chick. I can make the main switch. I can make a lane switch. Tick, 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 night. Help. We can get it. Get the better, better. What is he, MG Born or something? Aw, oh, man. The beats I don't finish be the hardest ones. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I should have finished that. <laughs> I know why that beat is hard. That was the beat. That was the damn beat I made with the uh, access virus hacking. No wonder, bro. You can be my major. I'm in the range. And you can switch. We can get it on the night. It's MG the future. Thank you for joining my channel today. For you. Hey. 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 This is good. This is a really good sampler, bro. This is probably probably one of the coolest one of the coolest samplers I have. But I do want to get it fixed. I want to fix the connection on the output so it stops. It, uh, you know how like when you touch a wire and the sound cuts, it does that and it's annoying. So and I don't have any more inputs on my sound card, so I'm gonna fix all that. I'm gonna fix all that in 2020. 2020, I'm making more lo-fi uh, struggle beats. But anyway. Let me uh, speak to the uh, chat room real quick. We got a lot of people, a lot of souls in here. Serious Dwix in the building, King Commit, Eduardo, Malcolm from the North, way up north, True P's in the building, Salute, Mean Gene, Shanann Band, Malcolm, MV, King Commit. Yo, when it hits 3 a.m., please keep talking about the 7 billion cap. <laughs> 7 billion cap. MH is in the building, Stefan's in the building, Will Ty's in the building, Bims is in the building, Antonio McKinney's in the building, Jayon, baby, I see you. Uh, Antonio. Spice Gang, AAA, the legends in the building. Drop a like while you're here. All 10 of us. How many of us? How many likes I got? I got 52 souls. I got 28 likes. And eight of those likes are mine. I need you guys to do a better job. Thank you, guys. Um, we got 10 fours in the building. Corey Broad's in the building. 
Um, True P says, if you don't a beat in mind, let's switch it up and do a score. True P says, let's do a score. Scoring what? I don't got, I don't got no video to score. What are you talking about? Oh, you trying to play with chords, chords. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm, uh-uh. I'm not doing Mandalorian soundtracks, bro. Actually, you could. The reason why I don't is that I don't like working tempo-less. You know, you got to play something without a, without a click track, and then you got to play all the other instruments to follow that. And if you know... The quantize on Studio One is a 16th early. How do you think that's going to go for me? Trash. So, I love your spirit, but that is what we call a dummy mission. Dan Rams in the building. What's good with you? Alex Vargas. What it is, cat? What's good, bro? Um, Craftmaster says, thank God. <laughs> Antonio's in the building. Hi, Lee's in the building. H-Y-L-I. What's good with you? That's like hi lie or Hi-Fi. What's good? Beat Juggernauts. The OGs are in the building today. Like the stream, y'all. Yeah, man. Craftmaster says, I still got like an hour and a half ride home. God damn, where are you, where are you driving from the Himalayas? Oh man, Jerome in the house. True, true piece said, you want some cinematic stuff. Well, well, this is called a mixing video. So I might make the cinematic sample in triple time. Yeah, you, you talk about switching up time signatures and stuff, bro. Oh man, I see struggle on your mind. Hold on. Hold on, I got something for you, bro. I know, I know what time it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro said, do something cinematic in Studio One. Oh, man, I know what's going on already. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Let's give it a minute. in the building i mean green says mg i need you to get that new macbook pro so we can go 1080 in this piece um my mac is powerful i could probably go 1080 in this piece uh i think obs is the problem i think more importantly obs on mac is the problem we have a lot we don't have a lot of features the window users have like stream labs elements or whatever i can't even use half all the cool stuff that the gamers use to be honest with you i don't think it's hardware i think it's software years ago say so he's ubering right now can't miss this all right bro be safe out there bro Big Will, I see you. Ernest Teller, I see you. Main Productions, I see you. MG, back with the chain you did. Oh, yeah. Sometimes your energy gets caught up in your head, like in your throat chakra and shit. And usually the jewelry you wear. I don't got my earrings on either. So, like, it, if you ever feel like there's a blockage, like, you know, in your throat chakra or in your, your face area and stuff, and shit ain't chain connecting, it's because we got this uh, silver bullshit. It's probably not even real silver, to be honest with you. And I don't even know how to test that. But whatever the case may be, it's probably the elements. That's why people used to wear like the wooden beads and stuff instead or wear, uh, you know, whatever your uh, birthstone is. Fine chains made out of that. Oh, Rumothy, what's good with you, bro? MH says, waiting for these mugs to deliver my new oven. Hey, F. Schmidt, my foe. Jimmy Wilson's in the building. What's up? Bless up. That one beats. MG, what up? What up? Ezra Greer, what's good? What's good? Chris Contreras. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Be joking, I said, YouTube tried to slip the slide with the notification. Got it on my phone, but they tried to rush the interference on my computer. Hey. <laughs> Jamie said he got to head out. He'll catch the replay. All right, bro. I'll make it public, I think, as long as everything stays on the, you know. The weed wheels in the building. They Deshaun's in the building. Miss Seven Six Coco. Hey, first time making it to the live. Hello, all. What's good, Miss Coco? Hopefully, I'm not assuming your gender, but super producer ladies are in the building. Produced by M.Supa. Ivy League is in the building. Aisha Cole. Yeah, we definitely got super producer ladies in the building then. You got the Cable Guys new joint? I didn't update it yet. I know it's a, like a, a bit crushing thing, you know, so you can do your uh, side chain, lo-fi, 
SP-1200 type stuff, but I haven't done that yet. Edward Wheeler said what's good. Raheem said what's good. BT's in the building. Automatic's in the building. Highly, highly favored. Blessing, highly favored. That's how you say that. Okay. Woodstock's in the building. Craftmaster said he's going from the west coast of Florida to the east. Okay. All in a day's work. Apollo Black, I see you. Jimmy Wilson says, time to go hit the bar and roll a couple. It's been a long week. Me too, brother. But I don't even roll or drink. I do have Paul Masson. I should have drank some so I can do an auto-tune music video. That's the only way I can really perform the way I want to. And then auto-tune works b perfectly when I'm when I'm drunk. So I don't know how that works. Not even drunk. I can't get drunk. I'm Irish for crying out loud. But you know what I'm talking about. When I'm an inebriate. inebriate. How do you say that word? People in the club and feeling inebriate, inebriated, and in, in, God damn, bro, why they make these words, bro? Hold on, in, 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 <laughs> I got the abbreviated part right, but even when I try to spell it, my autocorrect don't work because I don't know how to spell it because I don't know how to say the first part of that word, inebri, inebriated, inebriated. Why is there a B there? What you know what I'm talking about? That word, that word is yeah. BT's in the building, main productions, DJ MVP, bass man for life. I see you, brother. True P says, don't do me like that, MG. Damn. <laughs> nah, I got you. I think True P was posting up the scoring stuff with Studio One on Twitter. I did catch that. I did catch what you were doing. I honestly thought you were making loop packs, though, so I, I, I completely miscalculated. Bino says, Chase and Pacement sketching Cosby's. Whoa. I am 607's in the building. Oven deliveries on a struggle timeline. Oh, you, they must be coming from FedEx. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yo, I just missed everything. There's fire in this chat. Okay, I see you guys. There we go. Bomb. Right here. Schmidt and Bims. Be checking out some. Every time I hear that song, I keep thinking Akon is back. Yo, relax. Reese Bertrand. What's good? In the building. Med game. In the building. God damn it. Oh. Uh, and Dot Super says, I email Streamlabs about creating a Mac version. It's not going to happen. Their only concerns are Windows. And Dot Super, I know. That's why there's going to be a competing force. There's going to be a competing company to do the same thing that they do and better. It's going to be Mac exclusive. And then Mac is going to set the world on fire from the streaming standpoint. And they're going to look like a bunch of dummies when they lose all the money because they know damn well Mac is going to pay for the subscription. Anyway, Case Music's in the building. What are your thoughts on a new PC update Live X Force? I think it's all trash. Next. LeVar Bennett says, creeping from work. What's good, brother? Isabella Johansson's in the building. What's good, Isabella? Oh, we got more, way more ladies today. It must be a Friday thing. Arcane says, I'm waiting for these mugs to deliver my new monitors and audio interface. Bless, bless, bless. Blessing so that everything works and it's hooked up. Everything is effortless and that you get that big smile on your face when you're playing Struggle Beats from SoundCloud and you hear a difference. Bless, bless, bless to the brother Arcane. I almost bought some monitors, but I, I, I'm trying not to be selfish because it's Christmas. Um, I'm just going to hold back. I'm going to hold tight like I hold tight. I'm not going to get my joints until like January, February, got down. I don't know if I'm going to get Adams or Focals, though. Ah. Miss 76 said I'm a woman. Hey! BA Mac, super female ladies in the producer chat again. Back to back. All right. Can you play that beat again? I didn't play a beat, brother. I play Struggle in Your Mind. Why you struggle all the time? Uh uh, da da. Carlin's in the building. I am 607 said it's called inebriated. Jesus Christ. Look at, look how they spell that word. E-N-I. What are they trying to hearken to inky? And inkybriated? Inebriated. God damn. I could spell that, but that's not it don't even look like that's the word though. You feel me? David Treasure said he just got core pack two. What's good, fam? I got one package at the time for the sub. <laughs> oh my bad. Inebriated. I N E. See, that's what I'm saying, bro. That don't look like it either. N I I N E. I need Kamozi, here comes the hot step, a murderer, still living like that. Like that's, that's what the word looks like. It looks like I need Kamozi. I'm, I'm never going to remember how to spell that. That's why that song, no one plays that song because they don't know how to spell his name either. And you know what? Title on YouTube ain't going to do no autocorrect on I need Kamozi. Like, no, I'm not doing this. Inebri inebriated. It's, you know what's messing me up in that word, Bims? It's the B, bro. It's the B before the R. If it was inebriated, I could do it. But it's inebriated, inebriated. Like anytime you got to break your consonants with a, 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 that's just trash. That's how I know I'm not supposed to be speaking English. They done stole my language, bro. True P says I am making loop packs. I gotta expand my palette. I see you, brother. Jamie Melissa says MG Adam love that struggle my mind track for real. Appreciate it, bro. Alessandro, what's good? Aaron W, what's good? MJ is so wrong. What's good? Shine Uno, shame on you, Akai. Shame on you. No, it's not shame on Akai. They're chasing the uh. They're, they're chasing the Ableton Live struggle placements, man. They really wanted to be pushed three when they grew up. And you know what I'm saying? I, 
I think they've wasted a lot of resources catering the Akai workflow to Ableton users, which is a dummy mission because um, the, the Push 2 is arguably the best MIDI controller in the world if you are using Ableton exclusively. So to have a hardware standalone experience with a different sequencing and programming workflow to get people into Ableton so they could test these features. And then once they're in Ableton, they're like, why am I using the NPC for? And then because there's struggle in their mind because the integration is not tight enough, the people just end up in damn Ableton all day because it has time stretch that works. And then you're like, why do I have this Akai controller? And then they're like, yo, we're going to update, we're going to fix it. So you can like make loops at your DJ pavilion and at the clubs. Like like people are in the clubs DJing, making beats or something. I haven't seen it. I had a beat battle every once, three months. Like, man, shit, come on, bro. Y'all got to get me fired up. I ain't trying to be fired up right now. Got down. Woo. Whoa. 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 Let me relax. Uh-oh, Cool Skates is in the building. <laughs> I like that name. Jones got music, Big Will. VS says, which monitors are you trying to cop, MG? I don't know. I'm trying to get some high-end uh, Focals or Atoms. But do I need them? No. Because after this mixing tutorial, you're going to understand that you don't need ah, monitors probably at damn at all. Get you some good headphones. Speaking of which, these are good, but my ear's still hurting on the right-hand side, so it's me talking. The reverberation, I guess. Trash. Isabella, yeah, we got it. We figured out it was inebriate, but that is a struggle word, so we're going to find out a big, better word. Bim says go for the atoms. Oh, my spicy submission finna be fire, Dinkle Bob. Case Music says... Are we at the end of the stream? Dinkle Bob, if you do not look at the timeline on the YouTube player, you can rewind it. It'll tell you. Rumothy, Ja Rose, what's good with you, family? No, we're not at the end of the stream. I'm just greeting the chat room. I need you to relax, fam. Rumothy says, it's indeed he hated. <laughs> I see what you did there. Alex Vargas says, I need Kamozi. One, hall, one half of CNC Music Factory. Wait a minute, relax. Relax. So hold on. Everybody slow down. Everybody fucking relax. You said I need Kamozi is one half of the CNC Music Factory. You're saying, Mister, here comes the hot step, uh, murderer, is the same dude from Strike It Up? Are you serious? Are, what are we talking about? How did I miss that? What? Do you, no one told me that growing up. The dude I need Kamozi is from CNC Music Factory. What? 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 That's like finding out Vanilla Ice was in D12, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm over it, bro. If I could spell his name, I would know that. Albert M says, yo, what's good, bro? There's been a major drop price with a Kai Force. It's time to sell the NPC. It's $8.99 in the UK, and I'm seriously thinking about it. Albert M. <laughs> the, yo, bro, there's definitely a disturbance in the force, bro. It is one or two things. One, uh, they, they manufacture way more than people are buying because it's not finished yet in the beta phase. So they're just trying to get rid of back stock, and they probably have a new product coming. Like the NPC, you know, XL is probably coming. Or uh, Ableton Push 3 is coming. So anytime you see numbers like that, just keep your eyes on them. Hebrew Child is in the building. Chaz Worth is in the building. Arcane Audio says Struggle Beats from SoundCloud. I'm going to play Resoner's Watchmen soundtrack. Okay. All right. Excuse me, sir. Pardon me. Oh, we got a lot of people in here. We got the brother BK Bangas in the building. Da, 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 da. Yamaha versus Focals versus Alpha. Bro, there's no comparison. You better stop trying to put every other brand in there with Focal and Adams. You better go to Focal or Adam and you try to talk about anything else. Boy, we ain't, we ain't playing keyboards off of Cork Triton no more, bro. Those are those are workstation speakers you're talking about. <laughs> you know those little speakers and guitar center on the wall? You talk, you try to put those in your studio. No, you can. You should. I'm going to keep my uh, KRKs. Cause I'm probably gonna buy me a laptop. I'm gonna buy me a laptop, a MacBook or something, and put my Serato on it. And I'll probably use my KRKs on the laptop over there in the corner somewhere. It just have them, but I don't need them. Need them. Highly says, "What mic do you use?" Now y'all gotta mind your business now, bro. I got a. Uh, hold on. Holy shit. Hey, shoo! Someone trying to make me sneeze. That ain't good. I got one of these. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, the Mike Jolly. The Mike Jolly. With a new head basket and nickel plating. You feel me? You feel me, goddamn? You feel me? You see how clear it is if I get really close? The only problem that sucks about these damn chaotic eyeballs is something called comb filtering. And comb filtering will fuck up auto-tune in your EQ. So if you go, uh, 
all those reverberating frequencies that get stuck in the eyeball actually mess up your mix or mess up your vocal tracking. So you actually have to talk from way out here to really get a good performance out of it. Then you're like, why didn't I just get a short SM7B? I don't know, because then you need a preamp and a cloud lifter for it. And you end up spending $800 for a $100 microphone. That's why we don't have it. Finally, I can see a live. Alessandro, what's good? Good evening from London. DJ Smasherelli. Hey, I've seen that name before. I am the Presonus uh, Match Subs. Hey, CB is not in my universe. Wilden. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Craftmaster said ID Kabozi from CSC Music Factory in his universe. <laughs> What's good, Antitrust? Uh. Great to catch the stream. Relax and sober. Kalina, what's good, bro? Snow was in Slaughterhouse. I need you to relax, MH. Why do you want an Akai Force? <laughs> Y'all need to stop. We're not going to be bashing Akai, okay? They just, they just, they headed in a different direction, bro. And they found out, like the other people did, that sometimes you don't need to head in a different direction. What's good, A King? Ish. MF Doom is in love with from KMD. Who? I don't know what that means. He said, watch how the MG mixes change when he gets off the KRKs. Yikes. Hopefully not that much, because I'm about to show y'all some secrets if I stop talking. Lord Botch says, peace to the Blood Flood crew. Gang, 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 gang. They try to say we're African. No, we're Earthlings. Da, 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 da. Anyway. All right. Emmett Sharma, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Mr. Max, season's greetings. Gary Johnson. Yo, I hate that when you scroll down, the damn YouTube thing just scrolls all the way down. And it's like, bro... I'm in control of the third mouse wheel here. Arcane said, uh, push three won't be a thing. Next Ableton Hardware would be something different. Not a replacement for the tush. The push two only happened because Akai kind of screwed up on push one. What? They're working on standalone. They're working on standalone hardware and beta, brother. I got connections, bro. Anyway. Are the eyeballs worth it? MJ, did you hear what I just said? Focal Alpha 80s are Liddy. XCMP. But Adam sound more clear from what I heard. Yeah, Adam also got consumed by a uh, focus rate. So when um when when focus rate starts offering Adams, I might be able to get a deal. Ooh. So I might be I might inevitably I'm gonna end up with Adams. Oh, I'm rocking the Samson GTs, hey, and some open back Sennheisers. I caught out here cheating, clout ch chasing. <laughs> yes, Mr. E. Brad, what's good, bro? Ronald Scott. Or you can buy Aston Stealth. It's a real deal price for of the SMZ. Nah, bro. I don't need another mic. If I get another mic, I don't know. I might get an old mic. Shit, I might mess around and get TLM 103. I don't know. I don't know. I got to figure out a, what my voice is and then find people who have a similar voice range and then find out what mic they're using. The ones that got hits. I got to look at Barry White's and uh, goddamn Isaac Hayes microphones. You know, them big circular joints Diana Ross used to use. What's good, EBG? Trey 8's in the building. Hey. I got focals. Get the atoms. Unless you're getting the real focals. Ah. Stop talking and make some fire for us. Ask me. No. Unless you're getting the real focals. What are the real focals? You talking about the Alpha Series or the ones above the Alpha Series? MG, we ain't supposed to talk about that. But in theory... When it replace push because it would be smaller for the sake of more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime they do a, a portable device, it's probably going to be smaller if it's standalone. I'm just interested in seeing if Ableton can do it because if Ableton can get a standalone simpler or a standalone operator, you know, like the default Ableton objects. Well, they can, bro. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Rewind. Remember at the end of last year, I was talking about I'm not going to rock with Reason again until they announced their standalone project uh, product. And then around February of this year, um, Elk Audio, whoever they were, stepped up to the plate and said they were going to create the framework in order to get the Reason modules into standalone hardware units. And then there's been a little bit chatter and beta testing in between. And then Reason came out with the VSC format and it kind of threw people off. Like, why are you doing Reason Studio? It's because they're working on standalone hardware. So if you can already integrate their workflow into any doll, then you can buy these hardware pieces, right? That hosts the... Uh, that crazy subscription site they have that no one talks about. Like, everyone forgets, like, Reason has its own Nexus, East, West, everything, bro, for half the price. And you can put it on a subscription, too. And on a tiered subscription at that. 
Anyway, those are supposed to be in a box unit. So I was really looking forward to that. There's a whole reason why I haven't really been rocking with Reason because I know what it means. I know what it entails. <clears throat> However, if they do that to uh, Ableton, then what they're going to end up doing is taking the steam out of uh, Native Instruments because machines acting like it can't be standalone, right? But if Ableton does it first, which it seems like they are, then that machine doesn't have an excuse not to make a standalone contact. You understand what I'm saying? Because the thing that's going to shoot machine in the foot is if they do a portable standalone controller and you can't call up your complete ultimate for $1,200, you're going to be pissed off because no one wants to make simple two bar drum loops on the subway, bro. So whatever that Raspberry Pi Linux operating system nonsense that they're trying to get the kinks out so that the experience is one to one when you get back home and it detects your Wi-Fi and then it sends the session files over in ALS format, whatever they're working on the logistics of, um, I imagine then all of the companies will then follow suit and all of a sudden everything will be portable or, you know, portable or in ad hoc. So I know that 2020 is going to be that. And I know with 5G and stuff and wireless connections in general, um, the fact that they're trying to put MIDI over Wi-Fi is like, bro, we've had Wi-Fi for like 20 years. Y'all just thought about that? You know how many dongles and add-ons they sold us and they could do this shit over Wi-Fi? Are you serious? So, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, they're getting to a point where they're, they're going to stop playing with us is what I'm saying. And I guess, you know, they have way for manufacturing and cost and labor and all that kind of shit too. But I, I feel like Ableton would be the first one to do that. Out of all the German companies, I kind of feel like Ableton is like single track minded. So when they do something, it's on point. Um, Native Instruments is in a weird space. They laid off a lot of people. They're starting to uh, ramp up with the urban expansions, as we've been complaining about for five years. So they probably have some new uh, R&D people or new talent or new, you know, fresh energy. So it looks like they want to do some positive things. So I predict the Native Instruments come back next year. So by the time Native Instruments is ready for the next complete, I think Native Instruments is going to have other things in place to put them back on the map in terms of our zeitgeist. And then poor propeller heads. I don't know what them and Elk Audio are doing, but they're, 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 their company is niche in the sense that they'll do something really cool, small, and then everyone else will copy them and they won't get the credit for it. So it's, it's, a, it's a weird time, bro. BK Bang is like a UK U87. B Chu, what's good, bro? <laughs> Craft Master says, ask me as a chat dude. The one above the alphas. The cherry wood joints. They're 1300 apiece. What do you think? I'm Kane Beats and Johnny Giuliano? You crazy. B can you picture me rolling in a townhouse with three thousand dollars worth of monitor? Uh -uh. I gotta crank those. I can't crank that in here. Just producer says. They make a U87 clone that's only $200. Tech Zone Audio Products is called the Stellar X2. I think I got down uh, your boys at Warm Audio do too. Playboy Hustler says everything's about to be subscription based. Yes, sir. That's the Fat Lady Sing prophecy. 607 says we got the TZ Audio clone a couple of days ago. It's pretty good, very warm, and, and it takes effects well. Good. Nafiz, what's good with you? Apex, Odos, what's good with you? EBG says, NI equals not interested, especially in your Negro aspiration. <laughs> uh, the Rode NT1 has a pretty dope in shootouts. Just a cardoid, though. Nah, my mic is like, like, like CMP is saying about monitors. Like, don't get this range of monitors if you can get the Cherrywood. I'm not getting any of those range of, monitor, of mics that cost the same as my current mic. My mic is like $500. So anything in that realm of parts and components, it's not gonna make a difference. He said, and I'm gonna be lit. They took a season off like LeBron. You said, uh, you said Native Instruments was on load management. They must've watched too many spicy Sundays because they've definitely been working. So I, I look forward to seeing, I, I, I don't, I look forward to see a new a new native instruments in NI. <laughs> my boy has a warm audio A7. It's not lit <laughs> compared to my vintage joints. Oh, Airsharp, you got two vintage U87s. What are we talking about, bro? Go ahead and go ahead and come up off one of those, bro. Go ahead and come up come up off one of them, bro. TZ Stellar joint is almost a must for anyone who wants a U87 TL one and three sound. Oh, you said the warm audio isn't as good as the TZ Stellar. What are we talking about, man? Why y'all? You said it sounded like the CL1 on. Okay, shit, shit. I can buy it tonight, you feel me? What's it called? CMP said the cherry wood joints sound good in small rooms. 
Tech Zone Audio. This sounds like such a corny company too, right? I don't care about what you do. Where are your microphones? This one right here, right? The Seller X2 is a U47 style, JFET circuitry, head basket. The audio samples ain't gonna prove nothing until a real one is wrapping through it. The new Seller X2 premium quality, are they the same microphone? This is Stellar X2 Vintage, and then Stellar X2 New. This is K67 style. This is the TLM style, right? Facts or nah? Oh, they only make two microphones. Stellar New, Stellar Vintage. This one is not out yet. This one is $200. Buy on Amazon. Okay. I can. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark that. Thank you, guys. The <sighs> donde? Wow. Okay. You said this is the next one? This is the next microphone I'm trying? Uh, it looks like they got a color module in it. <laughs> that's funny. If, that, if that's what they're doing. But for $200, I ain't going to complain. Even if it is trash. I'll have two microphones at least. I only have one right now. I gave away my uh, a microphone to a rapper. I think he sold it for heroin. Unfortunately, or where they got it back from. I got the Amazon coupon if you want to get it for 170. Not sure if you want to. Not sure if I want it for my home studio. I don't know AirSharp. I don't know enough about it. I just know I need a, I need another microphone for my voice. <sighs> That's all I know. Finkel Bob says, "Have you ever heard any producers trying to use Scalar with FL Studio and Saw or Morphine? I run everything through Patcher, but the MIDI isn't saving when I play something." Um, no, I don't know any producers that do that. But I know what you're talking about with Patcher. I haven't learned how to use Patcher yet, so I won't be a resource for that. I think Av McCree might be able to do that. But I do experience the thing where you save all these MIDI effects in any DAW, and you reopen it, and everything is lost. Hence why everything outside of Studio One when it comes to MIDI routing is a dummy mission. But no one's going to listen to us until it's too late, so it is what it is. Apex says, damn, that sucks. MG, what are you using for a mic right now? Just join the chat. Jalen, uh, rewind that little ticker about five minutes. What's the Malcolm says free Spitfire audio instruments are out for those who don't know. What? 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 Spitfire did what? Because I got time today because it's a Friday. I need y'all to relax. You talking about some sleigh bells, bro? There ain't no new Spitfire instruments out. Don't be getting me uh, all hype. Unless you're talking about like Instruments, instruments, like the regular stuff. Come on, bro. Move, 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 move. Come on. This website is annoying, bro. They try to be so 2020 and their website don't, it don't rock like that, bro. You don't need all this. I promise you, Spitfire. So the brass came out for $30. They ain't no new free instruments. What are you trolling, bro? You trolling. There ain't nothing new out here, bro. I be knowing, bro. I'm on the mailing list. I'm the first person in that mailing list. <clears throat> How come all we can do is 808 slides? Lisa, what's good, Shane? Super producer females, baby. I tried to help some friends who are on heroin, but they don't want help. Yeah, bro, it's 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 tough. I use reasons which MIDI keyboard's a good suggestion. I'm on my way to purchase one now. I don't know, bro. Uh, it depends on how good you are at playing MIDI, because you could just get one of the Novation ones and it'll be good enough. You can get one of those high-end impulse joints from M Audio if they still sell them. That'll be good enough. You could probably go with that company that made Reason exclusive controllers. What was the name of that company? Nectar. Nectar is, but you can't buy that on Guitar Center. You got to order it. You can get a Nectar since it integrates for Reason, but I don't know, Chief. I got an, When I use Reason, I use my Akai Mini, and it maps the eight pads to the redrum. That's all I use. My bad. I thought those were new. Oh, Malcolm said those are the ones you're talking about, fam? Oh, no. Nah, you're good, bro. You know I'm on top of the Spitfire shit, though, bro. Pause. I'm on it, on it. You feel me? I'm almost about the brass woodwinds. And I think that's why the brother Troopy trying to nudge me to do cinematic scores and shit. Because we ain't bringing TI back with the brass. So I don't know why I'm about to get those. Hey, MG, do you know the website that sells hardware, color emulations, SSL API tape, and others? Yeah, reverb.com. Um, Reason Rack is dope. I use Slate VM1 and VMS system. Hey, I'll use the... Uh, I was going to use uh, Antelope Audio's microphone system. And when I was talking with them, they misled me and left me on a cliffhanger and never got back in contact with me. So I figured they're one of those companies that don't respect the urban market again, 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 again. Like you have all this cool emulations and colors and stuff 
And I don't think people know that the quote unquote urban market, because, you know, we're not black anymore. We're black. We're like the United Nations in this bitch. That's the, re the realization I'm coming to. But the urban demographic of sound um, is the most prolific group that is buying vintage emulation plug-in and gear for the sample sake of recreating samples and vibes. And these motherfuckers are acting like the rock gods are going to keep their companies alive. I was like, bro, you're smoking the midius of mids. If you think someone is about to, man, don't get me started today. Whatever. Kevin Mack, Black Soul, Mean Gene, Dark Knight type beats, please. All right, I can do that. Flesh Sounds. Are you talking about the DIY recording equipment? Yeah, all that stuff is on Reverb.com. All of it. All of it. The parts, the components, all of it. One rack to rule them all. Corey Broad. Oh, you're talking about Reason? No, no, sir. No, thank you. Mr. E. Brass says, Nictor P3 for reason all day. Yes. MH wants to know, MG, can you make a 909 bass drum from a deep breath? <gasps> Yo, you are a fool, bro. I actually have a field recorder. My uh, Q, my Q, what is that called? The Zoom Q? My Zoom Q is a field recorder. It has the field recorder mic and everything. And it records in lossless wave format or whatever the hell for video. But the video looks like a GoPro, but less quality. I don't understand how you have this high-end audio, but your performance on the video is trash. Whatever. But I, I get it. It's supposed to be a field recorder with optional video. <laughs> I have one, but no, I'm not making 909s out of, uh, out of deep breaths and watermelon concaves. I'm not that cool, bro. I did all my lo-fi foley two years ago. Sakim, what about Coop the Truth? <laughs> Nectar P series is true for more styles and routes. Then it's about the drivers, UAD, RME. You skipped the part when you read it out of context. Corey Broad. What up, bro? I have Reason 10. Can you make a video on how to start from scratch and making music beats? Andre Rounds. Andre Rounds, you want to learn how to make a video? You want to learn how to make a beat from scratch? Yikes. Um, I don't know, bro. Andre, you got to know what kind of beats you want to make. I'm about to show you a project that I'm working on. Because my brother from the Discord, by the way, links in the description to join the Discord. He was a uh, he was ca he was catching the vibes last night when he asked us, "What are your secret uh mixing chains for drums?" And I was like, "We ain't got no we ain't got no goddamn effects chains for drums." And um, I think he misunderstood what I was asking because I don't feel like he really answered my question. Um, basically what he was getting at is like yo everyone is processing doing tutorials or we're seeing everyone put all these heavy effects and buying these new plugins for samples and melodies but then he said then how come you don't see this happening for drums and it really stumped me it stumped me really bad because he couldn't explain it or articulate it yet he'll be able to soon i'm almost certain he'll get it but he didn't understand what I was asking. And almost, and when I read it, I almost looked like I was being sarcastic, but I wasn't being sarcastic. I was being dead ass. What are you looking for? What, what is your problem with drums? Why do you want to put a flanger, EQ, and a vintage compressor on a snare for? Are your drum, are your drum kits not hitting? Is there something missing? Is there something uh, unclear about the drum process? So, I think I know the answer to that. And uh, and and now I'm assuming now. I'm not using any superpowers or nothing. I'm just going to assume. He's trying to get clarity out of stuff. And this is our brother, by Accution. So I'm going to listen to one of his tracks, if that's okay with him. And I want to point out uh, the issue with, mix, with his mix. And it is not a bad beat. It's not a bad mix. But I'm going to point it out and show him how to get clarity by listen. You'll see. Let's, let's play. This is the brother, Carlin. Continue. He goes by by Action in the Discord server. He's the brother that came up, wanted to know about mixing drums. So you hear how his uh, crashes and stuff are flanging? So he's got a lot of reverb on that clap. And this organ melody is really nasally, is right down dead center. And I do that all the time when I use loops, so I'm not the one to talk. But you'll notice that because it's nasally right here, it's too narrow. This sample's too narrow. He needs more stereo separation. And if it's too nasally, it's in the way of what of your what? Your hi-hats and your percussions shit. He has a cool doubling effect on that open hat though, but it might be too flangy. It 
And the bass is a decent level, it's just not ripping through the speakers like he probably wants it to, right? And that's because that organ is too low range of an octave. He has to raise his actual sample bus up an octave and that whole beat will feel different. So I'll just go over this real quick. This is a outline of a track I want to do and I haven't done because I initially was gonna do this video and call it just add samples, just do the drums. And that goes to what my brother just said in the chat. He just said something like, hey, MG, I just got Reason 10. Um, how do you make a beat from scratch? Cool. So you start with a drum loop. These My drum patterns are only two bars, guys. Like I'm going to go through this real fast because I don't want y'all to miss the plot. Make a two-bar drum loop in Fruity Loops, Ableton, Reason, whoever the fuck, and just hit play on it, right? Right? And then you go to your Spicy Sundays loops, you go to your Splice account, you go to whoever the fuck it is. After you got that two bar loop, right? We're gonna look for a CMP sample. Right? We're gonna get a CMP sample real quick. We'll get some gangster shit real quick, right? Whoa, bitch, slow down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna half time it and see if it's faster or better or if I need to slow it down. Yeah, I need to slow it down. So we'll do it like that. Whoa, there's something wrong with that loop, brother. Why is it not? It's not the perfect range I need it to be. CMP, are you doing nine bar loops? Because if so, I'm about to cuff that, bro. Don't ever, don't ever put a nine bar loop in my folder, bro. All right, cool. So he's doing nine bar loops, right? You're done. There's nothing to talk about, guys. I need y'all to stop asking questions about beat making. Extract a chord track. I'm going to do this real quick. Right? It's going to tell you the chords in that loop, in the audio loop, not MIDI loop, not a burn MIDI, an audio loop, right? I'm going to go to my sub bass track. I'm going to switch this shit, the goddamn bass, and I'm going to turn it up gradually. And if you want to be fancy, Drop that bitch an octave. That's part A. And then when you're ready for part B, put it back up. Like, that's it. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever ask me how to make beats. It's that simple. It's really that simple these days. What's not simple is the, uh, the the cohesiveness and the taste and the ear and all that cool, beautiful stuff that we put into the magic of it. So that's why I wanted to talk about the mixing part real quick. So with just a drum loop going, I wanted to show my brother what my drums look like when I'm mixing them. So let's turn off that Foley sound. If you look at my drums, bro, this is from my brother from the Discord. Hopefully he watches this. The brother, uh, by by Accution. First thing you want to do is set a pro, uh, gain stage your drum tracks. Please, please. I don't care if you're using battery, machine, whatever. Use something that turns the gain down on your channel before it hits your plugins. In Studio One, we have it built in, but I always use Relay in case I use the, the Isotope stuff. But up here, you can type in negative three or negative six. And what you want to do and I want to show you, I want to show you why we have to do this. So if you listen to my kick, you see, I have it turned down, but look, look what happens to my levels when I unmute relay. These sons of bitches are making kicks that damn loud. That's what the fader down, that shit is peaking. So if it's going that red, just being triggered, what do you think your damn compressor and transient shaper is going to do? It's going to melt, bro. So you got to put a relay or gain stage, type a negative number, and either or, get this shit right. Another thing that I do is the stereo width, which is how wide the sound is into your left and right. I make all this shit mono on my drums. I don't play with that shit. I don't, I don't want to guess the perfect stereo thing, and I already told y'all why. A lot of these percussions come from instrumentals that are mixed, so when they isolate the left or the right leaf to get your favorite Zaytoven percussion, they're still bleed over on the left and right. So... Summing it to mono helps it stay focused, and then you can pan it, add delay, and reverb yourself. So every drum track is going to have its own relay at mono width and negative six, and maybe even more if the sound was too ignorant. Then 
I go through each grouping of sounds and I isolate them and I get their balance right together. So the kick and the snare and the claps are all the same category to me because you could drop those and just have percussions and hats or you could drop the percussions and hats and just have these. That's how we arrange most of our music anyway. You're either dropping the drums or dropping the percussion. So I make sure the drums are the loudest, the percussion is second loudest, and Foley and everything else after that is under those. If I get this balance right here, it's perfect. Another thing to think about is when you're mixing it or setting those levels, you're not looking at the dBs of the fader so much. The fader helps you, like, because these are RMS based, I believe. And you'll look at it and you'll be like, all right, I could turn this down because it's obviously louder. But hit this mix to mono button at the bottom of Studio One. I want y'all to see that. You see this thing? It turns red. It makes this red. That means everything's dead center. It collapses everything. Now you can hear that that snare is louder than you think it is in mono. But it's lower than my kick on the fader. But it's louder than my kick when it's summed. I'm cool with that. You can hear it better. You can hear the frequencies better. I can hear uh, my claps are behind my snare. When they're there, damn it. And then when you take it off, it's like, ah, oh, breath of fresh air. And then you see how that flanger and that reverb is going to left and right? Shit's fire, bro. Because it's the right level. Next thing's next. The brother was like, yo, but what about like, you know, putting effects on your drums? And like he did in his, he did the same similar thing to me. He put a flanger or a chorus type, phaser type joint on his clap. But I think he put it on the percussion or clap. I use synths for that. So you'll see on my snare, I have a plate reverb. Very simple plate reverb. This reverb, you cannot mess up. You, you change how long the reverb is and if you're cutting out low frequencies, that's it. And that plate reverb is perfect for drums. I have another reverb for the cool effect. Um, it's the Manny Marroquin joint. The reason why I don't use like a, a impulse response library or a high-end EMT is because this plugin uh, is catered to, pr not presets, but catered to scenarios of like, all right, so if you get a hall reverb, there's only three sizes. You don't have to worry about milliseconds. All right, once you have a reverb, you put a phaser distortion on it, maybe. Boom. All right, we could cut the lows, mids, and highs out. Boom. We could compress it and bring up the level of the reverb. It does all of that for you so that your send channel doesn't have a layer of four or five in, uh, individual plugins that are eating up CPU. And most of the time, you don't even know what you're doing. You don't know the signal path. So this is a cool all-in-one signal path for creative reverb. So when I use it on drums, I'm going to mute them. Oh, we can't mute them because that'd be convenient. Hold on. We can mute it. I just got to isolate. Everything's dry again. That's how I mix it. But when you put the reverb back in, it's subtle as shit. And it breathes. So that's why when bro was saying that to me, I was like, your inserts on your drums, like, so put the damn, if you don't turn the damn faders down, that's how you fix your drum bus, bro. But you feel me? That's, that's simple. And then, like I said, I go to the next group and I isolate. Same shit. I'll put it back in mono. My main hi-hat's the loudest. My percussions are left and right of that hi-hat. Where you want it, left or right is up to you. But that hi-hat's dead center and the percussions are left and right of that. And I make sure the hi-hat's the loudest, at least for today's music. And then there, some of these are being sent to reverb. All to the plate. And if I turn it up, you'll hear it. It ain't that damn serious though, right? Just a little fizzle in the background. And these are open hats. You're probably not going to have three open hi-hats in your beat. But since I do, I put them all in different parts of the stereo field. And what I had to do is mix them in mono to make sure that their high frequency is damn near the same level. The actual ks. I'm adjusting the level of the ks, not the sound. Does that make sense? I can't even explain it. I'm adjusting the level of the highest part of the EQ, not the actual level of the sound. So the highest point in my ear, the ks, I'm turning that down. I'm not turning the, the bulk or the transient of the sound down. Basically, you're making sure nothing's exploding or blowing up, like outside of the regular uh, level of the track. So for instance, I'll show you. 
This one right here is loud as shit because the body is heavier than these. So I could turn it down even. But you still hear it because of how full it is. So I'm adjusting that higher end. So it's competing with these two, which are brighter. Easy money, bro. Once you have that set up, once you have that set up, bro, you go to your loop or your melodies and stuff, and they're always going to be lower than your drum set, right? So I'm going to move this around so you can see that level difference. This is the blue track, right? This, whatever it's doing, is always going to be lower than these guys. So you start from zero, you have that shit in mono, and you just start turning it up. Like, I can hear it there, right? And you know there's going to be a voice on top of it, but it's too low. So just keep going it up. Imagine your voice is there. It's around there somewhere, right? You hear it clearly. And it's not masking your drums. Ain't shit in the way. And you feel like maybe it's too low. But that's, where, that's when you start EQing the shit. So while it's still in mono, I'm gonna cut some of that, the mids out, or no, the, the lows out, just a little bit. And all that action that I can barely hear at that level, that's what you're boosting. Now I hear it perfectly without touching my damn fader. Now I can take this shit out of mono. It's where it needs to be. The only other problem it may have is that it's too wide or too narrow. So we'll experiment with this, uh, we're gonna experiment with this mono shit. So the project's in stereo, this sounds in mono. And you hear how wide my hats are and that reverb is. And I'm gonna adjust this. That's perfect for me. And I could probably turn it down just a touch. And I'll send it to the reverbs. In fact, I'll send it to both reverbs because I'm gangster. So your drums are still banging like fuck. There's no cute compressors. There's nothing happening but level, bro and knowing how to, to flip between stereo and mono. The next thing is the bass. The bass is always the pain in the ass, bro. Bass is always like misleading because it'll sound loud, but it'll be wrong because there's not enough harmonics in it. So, sum it all to mono. Again, this red dot. We're gonna turn this bass up. This bass is gonna be, on a, on a meter, it's gonna be louder than your sample and everything else, so you ain't even gotta guess it. You wanna negotiate how much of the low end of the rest of your sample and your drums you're gonna sacrifice to make this bass stand out. So this is hitting negative 24, which really don't matter, but my bass is going to be louder than that. My bass is louder than the sample. So it's even with it, and I feel it in my headphones, it's going boom, but it's low key. That's more like some R&B shit. These kids are ignorant. They're going up on a Tuesday, baby. But now that you can hear the rumble clearly, it's going to get in the way of other instruments. And again, that's why we got EQ. All this shit is going to get in the way of all my high end. So I'm cutting that shit out. Get my hi-hats again. That bass is huge. What that bass is really getting in the way of, though, is the kick. Um, because of the way the kick is situated. So we have something called sidechain. I use something called track spacer. Easy. Easy money. I can send my kick to track spacer with a sidechain. And it's going to duck the frequencies of the bass that is occupying. I can roll off the 33 and under. I can narrow it down so it's only ducking bass frequencies when the kick is in. So my kick is still there. And this is all in mono. Because like I said, in mono, you hear how loud and how much energy it really has. That bass has a lot of energy. I may not need all that. I may need to turn it down just a touch though. I can go into sublab and add harmonics to it by driving it. So that's still cutting, right? 
And this right here, this uh, X sub is just R bass. So I can turn this up a little bit. I don't want it to get distorted. So I'm back up on the lows. I can still turn it down now. That bitch around here somewhere. It's around here. And you can go, you know, you can check it in the car, you can check it on your loudspeakers. Your speakers are gonna tell you more than your headphones. But I hear it. I'm gonna take it out of mono. It's loud enough, but it could be louder. not in the way of nobody. I could probably even give it more love, bro. And it's just a balance between how much harmonics and EQ you have and how much level you're giving it. You want it like that, but everything else gets ducked because the bass is taking over. You don't want that effect. And a lot of people beats on SoundCloud have that effect. Your bass is too loud. And that's the tricky part. Your bass, if your bass is too loud, you turn it down and it is weak. And people can't figure out how to fix that problem. Like, yo, I know my bass is too loud, but to get the bass I want, I gotta turn my bass up and then the rest of my track suffers, but I want people to hear my bass. It's cause you guys are not hacking RMS. You guys are hacking, uh, you guys are sacrificing your track for bass. You guys aren't bringing up the frequencies. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. These are called mixing secrets, I guess. These are actually called things we be telling y'all, but y'all don't be paying attention. So you see how that, I don't know how, what experience you guys are listening to this on, so I'm not gonna assume anything, but it's low in my headphones. That all changes real quick, baby. We're gonna go to zero to 100 real quick. It's called Slate FGX. Loudness is tricky, but the best indicator of loudness is something called RMS leveling. Slate FGX is an old plugin, but it's one of the earliest ones that had RMS meters on it. What you're going to notice in most commercial releases, irrespective of where they put the L2 limiter, irrespective of where they put the uh, goddamn ceiling on ozone, irregardless of all of that, their RMS is always going to kick your ass. Always. Because their mastering engineer or whoever has hardware compressors and saturation stages parallel this, this and that, blah, 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 blah. This plugin just says fuck all that noise and add RMS to your track. So watch what happens when I use just the gain knob and I'm gonna increase the RMS of this track, which is probably low. So my RMS is averaging negative 12, bro. You know what commercial releases that they be having is up to negative six? You know how hard it is to add six goddamn dBs of RMS level? This ain't turning your faders up. This ain't turning your master up. This is a, this is a volume average calculation bullshit. This says, fuck what you're talking about. Let's just turn it up, baby. The RMS is going up. You see what I'm saying? Now you hear the bass in your speakers, in your headphones. You see where it's rolling into the red because that kick? See how the kick fucks it up? That rolling kick is adding a, a, like, a, like, a, like a wave. Like the, the frequencies are muddying up and turning into like a ripple of red RMS or bad RMS too loud. That's what multiband compressors were created for. That effect of what we can see what happens when the kick doubles on itself, that's why people created multiband compressors. That's why uh, Ozone and all of them have that. It's because that frequency buildup happens in explosive parts of the song, and when it distorts like that, you're, you're, that part, that moment is distorted, but the rest of the song is fine. So what people are doing is they're turning down their kick because of that moment, and then for the rest of the track, their kick is weak. So you got to find a balance between that shit. That's that's the real shits and giggles, to be honest with you. But in terms of loudness, done. There's nothing else to do, baby. It's not peaking on my master or nothing. It can't. Watch, watch when I bypass this shit. It's gonna feel like I I, I hurt your feelings. Weak as fuck. It's a game difference for sure but it pushes it forward. 
All right, so now for some advanced shit. So because it's easy to fool you by turning things up, this plugin has something called co constant gain monitoring. So you can hear more and just see the RMS. You can also deal with the transients. Watch this shit. So you see how like at this level, the bass and the kick are going hard. And when that happens, your, your hi-hats start to die. This transient control for detail will bring them bitches back. You hear how those hi-hats are back? I turn it down, they're kind of like faint. Dynamic perception, turn that bitch up a little bit. And that weird boxy kick, you just smooth out the ITP. It's a little bit better. And if you want more punch, which is your kick in your base, you can. Watch when I do this shit though. You hear how the kick sounds like a square? That's how kids be doing this shit on SoundCloud, bro. But I don't want to do that. I don't like that sound. Y'all think they mixing, mixing, bro. They ain't mixing, mixing, nigga. They're using Slate FGX. I just wanted to show y'all this so y'all know. Y'all on a dummy mission if you try and chase that. But anyway. So that bass is ignorant. Let me uh, turn on my loudspeakers up. Jesus. Shit sound like a record, bro. You feel me? And is that that? You see how I was jumping up and shit? You know what I might do for that? I might, uh... I might got something for that shit. Since I got any education and I don't know how to fix that, like, I'm not messing with multi-band shit, I'm gonna let Neutron fix it for me, baby. I'm gonna see if Neutron will fix it. I know it's gonna be up front. We ain't got to guess. We're going to see if Neutron's multiband EQ dipping follow helps us. Let us pray. See how it's blown up the limiter? Back it up. Set to a punch algorithm to add punch to the kick. Don't need too much of that because Slate FGX is working on it. That equalizes what I'm worried about. This frequency here, that muddy shit, good. And it's compressing it twice. So the transient stays consistent through it. For our music, that's fine. Let me see if that helped Slate though. Barely. It's still kicking it up to seven. It goes from 10 up to seven, Jesus. I might need to duck more of this hole. triple kick bro I want to be 808 Mafia so bad but I can I can now I have to negotiate do I turn my my bass down and the answer is probably yes yeah yeah that's a point two difference All right, so we went from negative seven to negative eight. Remember our RMS uh, negative from zero to negative 20 is getting lower. Uh, negative six, negative five, negative four or higher. It's, a, it's from zero backwards or plus four backwards. So if you're getting a negative eight to negative 8.5, it's going lower. Yeah, but yeah, that, that'd be the level for it. And so the mastering engineer multibands to shut out those frequencies, which I am not. But that's how you get the loudness, y'all in these drums. This 
just fire. That shit's a record, bro. That shit's out of here, fam. But but really, just look at my mix, though. There, there is no mix here. This is faders, gain staging, two reverb sins. I should have delay sins, to be honest. But I didn't feel like it needed delay. And then Slate Digital on the master, bro. And what I'm saying is, I'm doing it conservative. You ain't got to do it conservative. You could push that shit if you wanted to. Watch. Watch when I take that uh, constant gain monitoring off. The, shit, the whole shit changes. Watch. One, two, three, four. Cut those hi-hats back. You remember when your boy was saying like on the EXO Tour Life video, he was like, you know how like your percussion is on the front? He was, trying, he was trying to say, you know, that goes back to the motherland, the African style of stuff. This actually goes to this plug -in. Just turn detail up, baby. You ain't got to worry about the level of the hi-hats. Change the detail. Shit's easy, smeezy. This is SM, SM Zeus for mix engineers, baby. Just know that. Just know that. You guys are making shit complicated that don't need to be complicated. And it's my job to help you or at least expose you to it. Now, I don't expect you're going to get these things overnight and it's just going to happen for you. No, but I want to keep saying it and saying it's easy and make it easy. So you stop romanticizing it. So you stop feeling like, you know, you need a thousand more dollars of speakers. Hence the speaker comment. So you don't feel like you need the UAD, whatever. None of these shits are UAD. So you don't feel like you need to buy everyone's drum kit. You probably don't. You just need to know what to do with what you got. And that is acquired taste. That is not a technical thing. The technical thing is easy. The taste is what you're curating. The taste is who you are and what you are. And then there's little idiosyncrasies you'll, you'll spec and learn. Like, yo, MG, I know exactly how to fix that doubling bass frequency. Do this, this, and this. Or use the over-the-top uh, multiband compressor from Ableton. There's a million things you're going to learn how to do that are super technical and specific to your problem solving. But the overall message I have here, bro, the secret is, is that it's goddamn easy. No one said all the drum kits are the same. Stop buying them. No, sir. <laughs> all the drum kits are not created equal. The, the challenge in all the drum kits is finding the good ones. So you're, you're right in the fact that there's a lot of them that are the same. And there's a lot of them that are the same, but a better quality of the same. And narrowing it down and finding out where those are is important. Super important. The tools are luxury. Knowing how to use them is the magic. There you go. CMPs in the building. <laughs> Keyflo said, wait, we do need Adams. <laughs> we need UAD, bro. I didn't say we didn't need it. I'm just saying to fix your music right now. It, what I'm saying is getting a UAD and Adam ain't going to fix this part of the puzzle, bro. This part of the puzzle, a UAD limiter and XLNA shit ain't going to do nothing for you if you're not doing this. That's what, that's what my point is. The UAD shit has its place, bro. But you're trying to get these organic retro tones and shit, and you can't get the mud out of a trap beat. You feel me? Like, because your sample is too high. You want the instruments, these pretty instruments to be in your face. And you don't know why. Because you're a producer, you're, compo you're, no, you're a composer. So a composer wants to hear what he's composing. But in the actual context of music, we're making urban music, bro. The drums are the star of the show, next to the rapper's voice. If you had a rapper's voice, this would be a little bit different. Because you would be balancing all these levels versus the vocal. So this purple will be untouched. The vocal will be the second loudest thing and everything else will be matching or behind it, such as the bass. The bass is usually going to be equal to or less than the vocal. So, and then you're EQing to make room for those two. The drums though are just in your fucking face. You feel me? I got money and bitch is funny. Gotta go. Gotta go. I'm a can I make this unique or not?
versus T-Rex. I need y'all to stop playing with me. Go ahead and get the T-Rex one. Ruben DC, I almost just spent $200. I had to calm the fuck down. <laughs> Ruben where are you about to buy? He said, is there another way to accomplish what FGX does? Wow. Y'all ain't paying me no mind. <laughs> Y'all hear how clear the transits are on this shit? Y'all bugging, bro. Y'all bugging. I, I, I tried. I tried my best. Y'all don't get it, do y'all? Y'all ain't catching. Y'all ain't picking up. Y'all ain't picking up what I'm putting down. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I know why you said that. It's a money thing. I, I'm with the shit. Everything until FGX. Everything until FGX is still valid, right? It's still gonna be clean. No matter what, it's gonna be clean. It's just gonna be low. You notice how everything sinks when FGX ain't there? Yes. There's alternatives called EQ, <laughs> compression, parallel drum bus. New York compression on your master bus by putting a, a SSL style compressor and mixing it to 50%, you'll get some of the energy to come forward. The thing I'm tripping on is that people are looking for alternatives to a thing that just doesn't. Why do you need an alternative to the Holy Grail? And, and this is this is so important. This is important that you come to terms with that. If you know that is the Holy Grail and that is the secret thing, because um, you know like when you read the articles about it, that's what they use on all the Kanye West records back in the cruel summer days, right? When he had that white mastering engineer that wasn't Mike Dean, you say, yeah, FGX is my secret for all the Kanye records. Once you know that, you're like, I love those Kanye records. There is nothing else. You're saving up and waiting until you can afford that thing to get the loudness or the clarity of those records. You feel me, guys? Like, <laughs> how do they say it? It's like, if it's good enough for Kanye, it's good enough for me. And, and I'm just saying that loosely speaking. This ain't shit to do with Kanye. This thing is actually, I had it before that. I've had Sleep FGX since, like, I knew Keyflow. Like, we were getting FGX off of gear sluts, you feel me? Like, when that shit was on sale for $125 before Slate had the subscription, I bought that in the virtual tape machine. And <laughs> I don't use the virtual tape machine anymore. But back then, you couldn't tell me nothing. But the FGX just followed me for the whole, for the whole span of things. I always knew about it. I think, yeah, Keyflow, all of us. Yeah, FGX is like day one, actually. In fact, I think I've had FGX since like 2009, 2008, maybe earlier. I don't know. But the thing is, if you don't know how to use it or you don't know the context in which it's used, it's, it's nothing. It's just another compressor. The context of it is once you have a good mix and your mix is sitting still and it's kind of weak in the ass because of the leveling, you turn this gain knob up and fix the transients as you go and it's out of here, chief. So no, there is no alternative to how easy that is. It's three steps. It's out of here. I'm, I don't. I, if there is another plugin like that, I don't want to look at it because I already bought FGX. I'm done. That's all I need it for. I need it for the end of the track when I'm like, yo, I'm about to stunt motherfuckers when I go to this beat battle. When I go to that beat battle, I'm putting this bitch on my beat see, on my beat shit, and I'm I'm cranking it up maybe three more decibels because they ain't about to say that my snare ain't smacking motherfuckers in the head at that beat battle. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's that easy. It's like, I don't have to revisit my mix. I don't have to turn no faders up on the snare. I'll be like, all right, I need more punch on this track because I'm going to a beat battle. You know that. You feel me? It's one of those kind of things, guys. It's a it's a context thing. It's not a, like a, it's not the end all be all limiter. It's the end all be all clarity and loudness plugin. You just got to know when to use that, when, when it's needed. That's all. Dan from Gear Slits. Yep. 2010. I'm trying to think of what else can we do to this track that people could stop asking me questions about mixing. Because I didn't mix nothing in this track. Yeah. I know what people get stuck on too. People be trying to mix shit. Like, uh, when it, like, compressing EQ stuff. So, like, this drum break right here. The only thing I have on this drum break is relay negative six before it hits my EQ. So my EQ isn't peaking red. And there's a simple telephone filter on it. I'm cutting that bass out a little bit and I'm cutting those highs out. Like I said, they call it a telephone filter shape, but the telephone filter is more narrow. And then you just start from zero and move it up to where it needs to be in that track. 
It needs to be louder than the guitar now. That's it. And we'll fade it to mono so we can make sure that's true. And mono might be too loud. Right there is perfect. Back to stereo. Learn your filters, learn your gain staging, and then pan. That's it, family. That is the secret of mixing for a beat maker. Voice and orchestras and all that shit's another story. For us, for what we do, for the three layers of sounds we have, cut it out. Cut it out. Relax. He said, CMP said, people just want to talk about their mixing like Dave Pensado, dude. That's all it is. Yeah, I get it. Big Will said, Deja Vu glitch in the Matrix. I've been here before. Then I've been here with you. I'm glad you're here with me, Big. NY Street Tracker says, is Sun Lab better than the 808 samples out there? Oh, no. Uh, Sub Lab is not. Uh, I'm not using Sub Lab for its 808s. I'm using Sub Lab for its key. The difference between Sublab and other things, depending on how you make music, is that Sublab sampler will automatically detect the root pitch of your favorite 808. So when you're playing it to the key of your beat, which is quintessential for us chord track aficionados, you ain't got to worry about going to Melodyne or Tuner and trying to figure out if your 808 is flat or sharp or in the wrong key. It automatically detects the key of the 808 for you. So if you bought a folder of 808s, like WAV files, you could drag them and drop them. Tell it to track it, which will follow the key. So when you hit C, it's a C. You hit D, it's a D. That's what Sublab is so cool at. The next thing above that, fuck the 808. Sublab has R bass and Max bass built into it, and it's multi is a multi band. So this little purple fader is the fader of R bass slash Max bass, and you can just add it to the subs or add it to the higher harmonics. Usually it's going to be the higher harmonics since you want to hear it on your laptop speakers and shit. And you can, you can fudge the balance of how that works. You see how it go left to right? It changes the odd harmonics or whatever the fuck they call it. And then you can roll off that and filter it. So basically, it's your chain, your mixing chain that an a, a engineer typically has for 808 in one plugin. So all you got to do is drag a sample in and go. You can save your favorite preset or your setup and then just switch the sampler. Just switch like, all right, I want the Pierre Bourne 808. I want the Zay 808. I want this 808 today. But everything else pretty much stays the same. And then you nudge things. And you can't fuck it up. It's hard to fuck up. It's really hard to fuck up. And it has an L1 built into it, which is their limiter. It's a brick wall limiter like L1. So you never go into red. It'll, no, it'll hit red on your master, but you won't clip the plugin. Um, it has a compressor built into it, so it can side chain within itself. Meaning, if you synthesize your own 808 or use one of the 808s that are synthesized, you can instead drag a kick onto this sampler part, like the Zay kick, that really sharp Zay kick or a rack kick, and cut the synth. And it will sidechain within itself, so you don't got to worry about Fruity Loops, you know, uh, LFO shaper and shit like that. It'll just do it. Base, anytime you hit the button, it'll cut the 808 for you. So you, basically, they took all the things we can do without it, but put it into one spot. So you don't have to overthink, like, all right, I need this distortion. You know, like people right now, they try to buy distortions. This is built in with distortion already. And you're getting distortion in Urban for 808s. It's built in already. All three shapes. You know, overdrive, grunge, tube, and dark drive. It ain't going to get too much different than that. You feel me? The quality may get different, but it's bass. You're probably going to low pass the whole thing anyway. You're not going to hear all that quality once you cut off 14K and lower. So it's up to you, though. You feel me? I'm just get, I'm just being a, a North Star for you guys. Y'all do what the fuck y'all want to do. That's how I learned. I did what the fuck I want to do. People have been telling me this for 10 years, and I ain't listening. <laughs> <laughs> and in not listening, I learned so much more other things. I, 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 I grew curious and went into other directions and um, brought new tools to me for other things. But when it comes to this, nigga, we're out of here. Bro, I could take this. I can go into this track, switch the kick, switch the snare, rearrange the hi-hat loops, and drag another Spicy Sunday sample in here. And it's another beat done. So when people be like, yo, I make five beats a day, I'm like, nigga... I can make five beats in five minutes. You ain't stunting on nobody. You hear me? Nah, you really can. Like, it's nasty. Because you could drag and drop these whole tracks out of Studio One from your old projects. 
Fuck this hi-hat loop. I want the other hi-hat loop. And it's done. Talk about five beats a day. Five beats a day ain't shit. Once you, once you got a flow and once you got enough projects to pull from. So that, that's, what I'm, that's why I'm saying to people, like, the making beats part is like, I, I can't explain it because I'm, I'm not trying to spoil the end of the movie for you. You feel me? Like, I'm careful. I'm careful with how I say this. Nah, with, with, the, with this style of music, it ain't that deep, bro. I, I think if I grew up learning how to do G-Funk, I would say the same thing. If I knew all the rules to G-Funk guitars, rhythm sections, wah-wah pedals, and fucking bass lines, I'd say the same thing. It's going to get to a point where you figured it all, all the moves. You know, seven, one, three, four. Like, once you understand all those bass moves, you got them all, bro. It just it just maps to the key. And we got chord track to map that to the key. So, you feel me? Like, yeah, is that, it is easy. It, this is easy. This is very easy. You just got to be really good. And by good, I don't mean technical. I mean taste. You got to have good taste. Feel me? Yeah, my FGX is on my iLock. In fact, Slate tried to play me. I tried to sign in to Slate just now to download the installer. And they're like, we don't, we don't know her. We don't know MG the Future. I was like, fuck you. So they do have a free downloads for their installers on my iLock. It was fine. Yeah, the, the Slate FGX also has a light compressor, but we're making trap. You're not compressing your transients. What's good, Mike Sauce? Oh, this ain't this ain't about the track, Mike. This this has shit to do with this track. This track ain't shit. Although Craftmaster did really good with that guitar loop, I'm kind of hating a little bit. But nah, it, this video has nothing to do with the track. I didn't, I didn't have to use a license manager. The slate, my three slate licenses are so on my line. Yeah. Like B Dragon I says, just use the court sounds and tweak a few sounds, right? Nope, seriously, you smell the oh my bro. <laughs> I think Stanford was saying was saying what I was saying back to me. That's all. About using your uh, templates to finish beats. Cause y'all think I'm capping, I'm not capping. So that's Craftmaster sample, right? That's Craftmaster sample. Uh I'm gonna take this whole chord track. God damn. And I'll move it out of the I'll move it out of the function. So we just got a beat, right? this to a new track i can hear my brother science fiction saying use the shortcuts mg use the shortcuts all right we got that nigga would you stop changing the pitch of my shit bro i don't get studio one when it comes to pitching it doesn't it doesn't want to keep your pitch for whatever reason it since that update that is stupid son of a pitch <laughs> Yeah, you see that shit where, it, where it's doing that weird thing to it? I think that's the right pitch, though. It might be me on mids right now. Forgive me. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It don't matter, bro. It don't matter. It's cool. We'll live. We'll live. You feel me? I'm out here. I'm out here. I'm out here, bro. It don't matter. Same shit. Put this shit in mono and figure out the level. I could probably even push it harder. 
They say I don't like those hats. I'm going to old beat real quick. Use these hi hats instead, you feel me? I need to find a sample. And that's it. If I wanted to change it up, I go to old beats. I hate this track though. Give me real hats, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Stop playing with my imaginations. There we go. There she go. We out of here. Same shit. So they talking about making five beats in five minutes. I'm like, eh. Hello. It's easy. It's really that easy. He says, where's the mirror? Where's cat stacks? <laughs> Y'all foolish, bro. He said that's not hard and he said that's not hard in FL Studio. Just change the 808. I didn't touch my 808. It is hard in FL Studio. You would have to change your 808 in FL Studio. That's the hard part. He said the hard part was not the hard part. You know what? It's not hard to do in FL Studio if you do the hard part. What? <laughs> Changing the 808 to a new sample you didn't make is the hard part. Like, playing the tune of the sample is the hard part. Everything else is easy, because the two-bar drum loops ain't killing nobody, you feel me? It is the 808. The, the samples, the tune of the sample in the 808 is the hardest part about trap. Absolutely. And Studio One says, just click a button. Come on, bro. He <laughs> said, re-rocking midis, video. Right. Facts. friction in there. Bro, this is fire. I don't know which beat I'm gonna keep. They're both fire. And I feel like I made this beat already because I did. I made this beat four times already and no one notices.
let's see something. Let's go to let's go to time stretch and let's follow chords on audio. Let's see if that works. So you're gonna tell me you're gonna tell me Fruit Loops could do that? Change CMP's guitar to my loop. You wanna tell me Fruit Loops could do that? Y'all talk to me. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. Fruit Loops is gonna let y'all do that. I like to see it, Monique style. get no one in their feelings bro i'm trying to tell y'all i'm trying to tell y'all something y'all not listening to me bro y'all not listening to cmp y'all not listening to nobody i just don't think y'all hear us bro you gotta feel us though you gotta feel us though. that's why i said this shit is easy bro this shit is stupid easy you gotta get to that jedi level bro what you in the jedi level bro it's like what do you do now Talk about plugins. Make YouTube channel. sauce for today i just wanted to show y'all because y'all don't fucking listen to me not all of y'all y'all know when i say y'all I'm, I'm being not facetious but i'm talking about the y'all that ain't listening i know there's a lot of y'all that are listening and watching you're like damn i'm fucking up i'm talking about everybody else y'all ain't listening to me bro but like, yo show me how to do this thing in this program and my question is has always been why why is there struggle in your mind well why are we trying to do everything else we're, we're trying to learn how to import struggle Fritz said, MG, I left FL because of you. It's like I moved a century ahead. Yeah, bro. ATCB says, I did beats in one session just doing exactly what MG did all day. Put it in the uh, beats feedback. He <laughs> said, the, the black post balloon is B.O.B. Stay woke. I believe you. Uh, there's some orange. I'm going to read the orange. Orange, 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 orange. When would you add the Zulu to this track, though? You would do Zulu before Slate. 
Kazulu's going to change the color of your transients and your track in general. So you, you'd always do Zulu before mastering EQ and compression. He said, what? I learned how to not struggle in FL11. Sounds as I said, why I punch it in the air? I was to go off y'all for not kicking Drizzell for that. MG fired up. <laughs> Studio, what about even expensive? Change dollars. Y'all got no excuse. It's a good idea just to copy the master's practice. Yes. I've been over listening and under comprehending. FL does not want to smoke with presonas. I don't think anybody does, bro. Studio One is like doll of the decade in a serious way. But I, I think a lot of what, what stops a lot of people is that they haven't found uh, the, the feng shui of beat making yet. So, like, it don't matter what doll you use if you don't like what you're making. That, that was the main conversation I wanted to have on top of the mixing thing. Is it doesn't matter like if you got all the plugins or the EQ techniques or all the pensados and audio school online and groove three, it don't matter how much of the shit you consume if you're not making stuff you like to apply it to. So you have to get to a point where you're comfortable and you know how to make the stuff that you like. Cause then once you're dealing with music that you like or sounds that you like to hear or things that move you, or even if you're more like me, cause I'm more agnostic about liking music than most people. I'm, I'm the worst case study case for that. But if I feel like the music can connect with someone else, like a rapper, as long as I like that, I'm going to put in the effort and apply all that stuff that I've consumed and learned. I, and, and it starts off the pivot. You have to pivot off of making what you like. So if you like music that has a lot of chords, of course you're gonna to to learn how to play chords. It don't matter, you know, how you make the chords, easy key, scalar, whoever, but as long as you start making chord and progressions you like, then you can move on to the next step. You gotta make drum patterns that you like, bro. Like if you're if you're trying to make trap type music, but you're doing hip hop East Coast 1999 chord writing drum patterns, it don't matter what mix or what 808 you're using. Your drums are wrong. You're making the wrong drum patterns. Do not reinvent the wheel. Modify it, not reinvent, modify the wheel. Throw some D's on that bitch, but don't recreate the wheel. Stop struggling. Stop trying to use 909 kicks and acoustic snares on a motherfucking uh, Wiz Khalifa track. Like, like, get your shit together, bro. So, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's, it's the basics. It's like that little stuff that people kind of skip past. Like our brother was saying earlier, you know, you don't need all, wow, these drum kits, they're all the same. It was like, yes, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe for you, but maybe they're not. Maybe because you think they're all the same, you haven't bought the good ones. I'm telling you, between me and CMP, how we back and forth on, you know, reverse engineering what's hot, it is, it's never the kits that people have. It's so weird. It's so weird. And then when I know people have the kits that I have and I hear their music, I was like, oh, you guys aren't game staging. You're not putting reverb on your snares. You're trying to put distortion, phaser, motherfucking neutron. You put everything on that snare but a damn reverb. And that's all you needed was a plate reverb. You feel me? Like, it's that, it's that easy. It's the actual answer is easy. The function is easy. Uh, the difficulty, the mastery comes with knowing. Like, knowing that, that, knowing that that's the answer. And I guess that's the thing you can't learn from YouTube. That's the thing that no one can teach you. I can't teach you context. I can't teach you uh, experience. I can just tell you you should do it, and then you could try it, and you, you did too much or you did too little. But you'll never learn, like, uh, why did I say that? You never know the why of my answers. So that's why I love doing the video shit. So at least you can see it from beginning to end and be like, oh, shit, it's possible. Once it's possible for me, I know it's possible for you. I'm the king of struggle beats. Trust me. If I can do it, any of you can do it. Yeah, Luis Far Faria says, I'm struggling with that. I find myself doing a lot of trap because that's what I can learn in the internet. But that's not what I want for sure. Maybe it's part of the learning process. Well, you could take how you learn trap and apply it to how you learned anything else. For instance, if I got to sit there and find the bad and bougie breakdown of the hi-hats where there's no snare, right? There's a there's a part where Quavo's going... Uh, Damn, damn, nutty, buddy, something, something, kid, cutty, da 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 There's no kick and no snare there, right? So you just hear the bouncing of the hi-hats, right? If I have to loop that 
put it into my doll and half time it so it's slower just so I could trace those hi-hats really slow and then double time my hi-hat so it's regular speed, then motherfucker, that's what I'm going to do to get that triplet pattern, to understand what happened, to see and hear how it sounds like in my analyzation of that. And by the time you do that to 10, 20, 30 of them, you don't need no more because the methods you use in drawing or doing shortcuts to make triplets and where they overlap with the open hat versus the snare, once you get like a model, a, a mental model of how that fits on the mainstream stuff and you start doing it yourself, you no longer need a trap hi-hat tutorial. You are your trap hi-hat tutorial. And the reason why I say it that way is most people who make the short 10 minute YouTube videos for FL Studio, they're real fast, but they probably spent three or four hours trying to make the beat before they turn on their camera. That's where they're sneaky at. You think that these kids are just doing this in 15 minutes. They're not. That's why they do one video a week. It might take them a whole week to reverse engineer some struggle trippy red shit. They might go through 10 trippy red tutorials their damn selves before they can figure out how they're going to um, refabricate and refurbish the shit for you. So you can't learn that way. You just got to learn the method. The method was, oh, this is traced. Now you can go to fucking Blink-182 and do the same thing. Find an instrumental or karaoke version of some Blink-182 bridge. Take those drums, put them in halftime so you can see every last single transient. Trace those transients sound for sound and then double time your result and you got it. Same thing with piano. You can take a piano. We got time stretch in Ableton and Studio One. If the song is too fast, slow it down to 120 beats per minute or 60 beats per minute is the equivalent. Then hit each key one by one. Like bing, 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 bing. Boom, you got the melody. Now you know what the melody is. Go ahead and convert it to intervals. All right, so within the key of C minor, which Studio One and Scalar told me, the interval for this melody is four, five, five, one, four, three. Now you can go to any other scale and start on four, four, five, one, three, whatever the fuck. And you got it. It never goes away. Like you guys, that, that's the thing, teaching people how to learn how to learn. And I don't know how to do that. That's why I call it reverse engineering and hacking. But it's really not that. It's learning. It's learning. Like that's what learning is. We could call it whatever we want. And there's different standards and different measures, but it's learning. This, this, is, this is a learning experience. But in application, you take everything you learned and your taste is what calls it forward. Your, your instinct, your intuition is what calls this shit forward. Oh, this beat's weak in ass. I should use a distorted 808. Why? From taste. Oh, this doesn't need an 808. I'm going to use a jazz bass or a P bass. Why? Because I heard it on a Travis Scott or Weekend or a Wiz Khalifa song and it sounded really good. With the same guitar type melodies. Yes, exactly. It's prog rock at the end of the day, bitch. You know what I'm saying. Y'all get it. Dead horse. <laughs> Beat K Vegas says, say it one more time for the lurkers and the nosebleeds. I be knowing, bro. I be knowing. Yeah, Louis said he, he absorbed it all and kept it moving. Facts. That's a good thing. I forever low passing my reference track to hear the actual rhythm of the bass and it's properly and the high passing just to hear that. Yep, money mics you can do it that way or you can double time it, half time it. So it slows it down and your brain reacts to it faster. Snowbar is said to force. Is it the toilet? People like to struggle because they believe it's about the journey and not the destination. Hmm. He said, who ain't do what? Oh, we got 200, we got 200 fucking people watching, 122 likes. Come on, you 80, you 80 lurker, 80 lurker you. Drop a like. It's easy. It's easy. I feel like that dude at that Miller Mock College, I think it's Miller Mock College. What are you doing? You're on YouTube all day watching ads. At least you could like the video. You're just going to sit home and not like the video? <laughs> and people be like, yo, I don't get your notifications because you're not liking my videos. Why would YouTube tell you that I have a new video or, or that I'm live if you haven't liked the MG The Future video? That's another thing, too. When you like, the more you like a creator's videos, the more it's suggested to you. Um, and I think that's why I got all the Area 51 suggestions. I liked a little bit too many alien conversations. All right, we're at 145. All right, so this is 55 of you slacking on your mac but that's okay. I'm dropping an album with my artist on Christmas. Hey, R&B blend. Hey. You could maybe show how you were telling me about how I vocals were too far ahead or separating guitar and piano with the, with the stereo separation. 
like I did with the sample. When I was bringing the sample in, I put a relay on my sample track and I adjusted the stereo width to mono. You know your sample's not going to be mono, but you creep it up until the whiteness of the reverb and the delay and all that shit from the sample is not in the way of the drums and the panning and the effects that you have. And then you can do everything else the same way. Same thing with guitars, pianos, and voice. Voice is usually mono before the effect. So your, your voice is dead center, and the delays and the inserts that you use on voice, like the reverbs and delays, what a lot of people don't realize is that your bus, your send, the, the aux that you put those delays on are wide. So you put a relay on those and, and bring that vocal plate delay or vocal plate reverb in a little bit with the, with the mono maker. So it's not so wily coyote. You have this voice in the middle and these effects far left and far right. That shit's cute for like a video game, but you want it more focused for rap or R&B. And, and basically, it's like it's like you're, you know how like we gain stage levels? You are stereo staging effects or you're stereo staging the effects on your instruments. So if your piano is wide, your organ's a little bit narrower and your voice is the most narrow. And then the way you get the stereo separation is when you delay it to different parts. Like if you have a vocal track, of course you have your ad libs. You can put like a shaper box to have the ad lib panning back and forth. You can even put shaper box panner on the delay if you want to. So if you send a vocal, if you send your vocal to a delay send, you can put shaper box pan maker on that delay so that the delay is moving left and right. So it's not static. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, so instead of we're not when you're talking about your voice, you're not adjusting things like this no more. You're adjusting things like this. That's the thing that everyone forgets is the stereo part of it. They're like, yo, my 808 is so weak. They're like, try to widen your 808. Try to use a more stereo 808. Hence, Sublab puts that effect in there. Um, or you'd be like, yeah, yeah, especially like 808, like 808 beats that don't have instruments. Like the, the we used to call them like, you know, uh, like Lil Ma used to, little M Mama Momo or, you know, little Bow Wow's alter ego. When he when he be acting like he's somebody else and he did the lip gloss be popping song. You know, it's like it's all bass or whatever or all drums or uh, Neptune's grinding. You have a way wider bass on that. Like, you can do the stereo and distorted basses on those type of beats. Or the baby type beats. You feel me? <laughs> he said, loser gang. <laughs> Crawford says, a loser. <laughs> loser gang. <laughs> loser gang. I'm going to watch all the sauce. And I'm still struggling. Please play struggle on your mind again for me. <laughs> there because raw is what they lacking yes ezra raw is what they're lacking yes mouse says those 80 lurkers about to redo this video say they are mixed gods now i mean they don't matter people run with it. people still act like they reinvented the frank dukes and palace melody sauce chain shit this is the craziest thing to see those videos pop up when you type it in you type in Frank Duke's Q-Beats or Palace and it's all my tutorial, but with a uh, Unstable instead of a uh, WoW. Because Unstable is free and WoW is $200. It's hilarious. A tipsy type beat. Yes. Oh, you guys are like five minutes behind. Y'all are just listening to the bass comment. Them ads got y'all set back, step back. Y'all probably see me talking now. I'm like a Chinese uh, ventriloquist. Oh, you are now watching. <laughs> Waiting for the video to catch up to real time. <laughs> you do fight, Will. <laughs> you are a worthy opponent. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Can you retract the video to the audio? <laughs> I don't know. That's how y'all responded to me right now. I got to wait for y'all to catch up. Shit got to be tracking. 210, 169 likes. Come on, guys. Let's do better. Let's do better as a culture. We need 30 more. I don't know who the extra 10 is over 200, but we can get 30 more likes for the culture, bro. Come on. Come on. I definitely did start the Frank Dukes tutorial wave. In fact, I am almost 100% certain I brought Frank Dukes into the zeitgeist of internet producers because Frank Dukes wasn't known like that. Drum broker, those samples, people, people were still bitching about using loops let alone buying drum broker samples. So yeah, yeah. When I was on my Ableton Live crime wave with Kanye West mixing tutorials, and I was telling everybody about the drum broker samples and Frank Dukes and how to do that shit with East West and all that shit, yeah, there's nobody doing that before me. You know how I know no one's doing that before me? Because I searched for it before I did it. I searched high and low 
So trying to see if anyone knew what the fuck was going on for the next five years, and no one knew. No one publicly on YouTube knew. No one was sharing their melody secrets. No one was EQing and lo-fiing a goddamn thing. Because the people who talk about lo-fi today are the same mofos who are talking about, isn't lo-fi just boom back? Two, three years ago. Just just two to three years ago. Look how fast things change. All of a sudden, everything's a lo-fi melody, sauce-up, vinyl, unstable. Everybody's doing that, but they thought lo-fi was just boom bap. So why would they all of a sudden be doing that? Come on, bro. You got to put respect where respect's due, bro. I, I put a lot of these, these things into the zeitgeist for sure. I, I'm certain. Because it did not exist when I did it. The reason why I had a $300 cassette plug-in is because no one was doing it with the struggle tube and transistor bundles people were reviewing three years ago. Let's cut it out. Let's re let's remember the time. Let's Michael Jackson that shit. Let's go back in time. What was the craze three, four years ago? Machine. Ain't no one making no damn lo-fi beats in machine, bro. Everybody's a machine. The machine controller, the NKS format. Every video on YouTube was about some shit like that or FL Studio. How, how do I finally get my orc hits in tune like Southside and, and fucking Lex Luger? And then everything else was like, hmm, I wonder how Metro Boomin removes the kicks every eight bars for a Metro Boomin type beat. You know, none of this shit was happening, bro. So, yeah, it is what it is, though. You feel me? You feel me? It is what it is. Everybody got every lo-fi. Oh, every, lo every time I get a lo-fi plug in and review it, in two to three weeks gestation period, Motherfuckers doing tutorials with the same fucking plugin. And remember, but the reason why this is important because these motherfuckers weren't doing lo-fi two or three years ago. They didn't even know what it was. They thought it was boom bap. Come on, dog. Come on now. How many times I'm gonna see how how, how many how many cookups I'm gonna see with the VHS in there? How many how many cookups we wanna see with RC20 on it doing the same thing to the melody? How many cookups we wanna see with halftime mixed at 50%? Come on, talk to me guys. Cause cause y'all motherfuckers weren't doing that. I know that. Th these are facts. I'm super aware. I weren't doing that. I was. Hove did that. So hopefully you ain't had to go through that. So I'm not, even, I'm not even styling on the fact that people adapted it. I'm styling on the fact that people act like they don't know where they adapted it from. Come on now. Come on, dog. Come on. Don't be like that. Don't be telling, talk about it's a secret thing, motherfucker. Once I do the video, it ain't a secret no more. It's my secret, not your secret. <laughs> my secret lo-fi chain. No, bitch. That's MG the Future's lo-fi chain. Just, just say it once. It'll change your whole life. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, the Melodyne stuff, too. That's why so many people are so um, um, gung-ho about the Fruity Loops upgrades. Because no, that, it's not in the zeitgeist. Still, even still, the idea of using Core Track and Melodyne is going to miss so many people. Even after showing it, even after doing it, either after demonstrating it, as many times as I do, people are not going to watch these two-hour videos and get to the last 10 minutes and hear the context and actually have the click moment where they realize they have to abandon Fruity Loops if they want to get any progress. They always miss that part of it. They always, they always do. They go to the part where they see me clicking on the screen and something and they try to take a snapshot or they whisper to their engineer to start recording or some goofy shit like that, but they miss the uh, context. And that's why you see the shit, the shit's in a, in a loop. In, uh, they call it a repeat until, an endless loop of the sorts. It's funny to me. It's very funny to me. It's like people are dried up right now, bro. Because they, <laughs> because they don't know where to go after lo-fi. Lo-fi lo gave these kids uh, about two more months of YouTube videos. Now they're back to doing um, still, still mallets and kalimba type melodies. They, ba they back on their j Hus shit. They're making j Hus tutorials and don't even know it. They're doing that shit all over again. I do a dance hall song parody. That whole fucking week, all I saw was dance hall tutorials. Mind you, there was no dance hall number one song in America at the time. Why? Like, no one has, like, they don't even have their own swag in the creator space, bro. You, you hear what I'm saying to you? You hear what I'm saying to you? They don't even have their own swag or know what to do in the creator space. And they're supposed to be the creators imbuing creation on the people who want to create. And, and that's what really grinds my gears. That's my, my, that's my Peter Griffin moment. That's what I be ranting about. I don't be ranting about the knowledge and the sharing of knowledge. I'm ranting on the fact that these motherfuckers are supposed to be creators, but they don't know how to create. Get the fuck up off of YouTube, bro. But I could say that and feel that way, but no one's got to do that. Do what the hell you want. Live your best life. If it makes you happy, if money makes you happy, cool. Do whatever you want to do. But my opinion is, get the fuck up out of YouTube. Stop doing that shit, bro. Just do cook-up videos. Do cook-up videos and show people that you drag and drop everything. You don't even, you don't even know how to play the stuff you're dragging and dropping. Go ahead and do those videos. Talk about why you don't have an 88 MIDI key controller for real. Because you don't even make your own loops. Let's talk about it. No one wants to talk about that, though. 
Nobody wants to go there because people want to believe the dream. And this this is uh, this is a continuation of my conversation yesterday. Why so many people are misled and believe in a fantasy is because people act like they're they're the people are are ca not capping about success or anything. They're capping about how creative they are first. That's the first lie. That's the first cardinal sin. They they're capping about how good they are, and and it's cloaked, it's washed with crates with a positivity. Like it, 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 it's uh, disguised as positive self-esteem, but for a person who recognizes wild beasts and animals, it comes off as low self-esteem because they're fronting. And then once they front and get enough people to believe the front, they monetize it. And then it gets, does this weird thing to the culture because it's a feedback loop to the people who are using their methods, which never work because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And then people will start living and dying on the sword of those methods, which are not real. It's that. It's not how you get it done. It's not how it was done. It's not what's happening. You're going to spend two to three years until you wake up and go, oh, this person probably doesn't know what they're doing. Hence. And then you'll find other channels and then you want to start doing shit like this, which is a new wave. Well, such and such said this, but such and such said this. Is this worth this? Is this worth that? Can you please compare this and compare that? And, and no one's actually honest with where these questions are coming from. People should honestly just say, yo, this one YouTuber with 500 million subscribers said I should do it this way. But I'm looking at you, a black person who actually seems to love music. You're saying it doing it this way. Uh, which way do you think I should do it? But I think I'm going to lean towards this guy because he has more subscribers to you. Is what it, that's what that dumb shit is. And that's why I catch an attitude anytime I get a dumb question like that. I'm like, you're only asking me that dumb shit because some numb nut over there don't know what they're talking about and don't make good beats is telling you that shit. And so many of you watch it that you all believe in and have these micro conversations in Facebook groups and discords. And then when it comes to us on Sunday saying it's all bullshit, oh, these guys are haters, man. They're telling the truth and shit. I'm like, but nigga, like, <laughs> why was that a lie to begin with? Why was that cap to begin with? Like, my nigga, like, you don't know how to play the keys. Cool. Then show your brother who's playing the keys for you some love. Because that's the part. That's the part that's gross, right? It, it's so gross. It's not even gross that they're capping on their ability. There's someone out there doing the work for them that's not getting credit for the work. That's gross, bro. It don't matter how much you pay that person, right? Like, that's gross. Like, like the midi pack kids and the Omnisphere kids. Like, it's gross. You make all these presets. Oh, yeah, I'm affiliated with such and such. But like, yo, I reverse engineer all of Av McCree shit. That's gross, bro. Cause you, because Av McCree ain't getting no light from that. Or like, oh, you know, I said you said such and such. That's gross, bro. Such and such ain't getting love from that. It, do you see what I'm saying? To, to keep the cap up and to act like they're creators and they're these people, they got to lie and hide so much more shit beyond, beyond, you know, what the fuck EQ they're using on their fucking snare send. We're not worrying about that. We're worrying about the whole facade, the whole thing. And, and that shapes culture and it becomes normalized. And people start to think, people start to think, that the secret to making it an industry is being a fucking lowlife scumbag who's uncreative and their only ability is to get people to believe their lies that they're creative. And then you have a whole bunch of people come up who peep game from the jump and do the same thing. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> See, it'd be crazy. He's a toxic MG unleashed. Overflow beats. <laughs> he said, what will the mixing techniques presume? Overflow, if you missed them, why weren't you here at the first alert and notification of this video? You don't get your head ass out of here. You don't tune in often, to be honest. You're a head ass. You don't ever tune in. So why are you asking to get back to something that you've never seen before? You've never seen my streams before. Why are you here? How did you even get into this channel? Why are you here? We're talking about mental health, all spaces. <laughs> Yeah, 2020 has to be pure intentions for real. In order for anything to be pure or intention, it has to be the truth. It has to be honest. Fuck out of here. You can't have nothing pure if you're a liar. If you're a pathological liar, you can't be doing anything pure or positive. It's called the left-hand path for a reason. What, what, like, 
We got Disney Plus. Watch Star Wars over again. Talk about the dark side. Talk about the dark force. Watch that part again. Absmoof says, this is the part where Maul comes in and says, oh, now we potting. <laughs> I'm not really going off on nobody. I'm going off on the spirit, bro. The spirit of our culture, bro. This ain't, it, it don't matter who does it. I'm not trying to go off on a person. I'm going off on the behavior. You know how they say that shit? Like, you, you could forgive a person but not forgive the behavior. Like, you could love people and welcome people and have positive energy for people. But if they have fucked up behavior, it's fucked up behavior. It doesn't matter if they did it or someone else did it. It's still fucked up behavior. And what I'm saying is this fucked up behavior is in a cycle that has created the moment that we're all par participating in. Even the new people who didn't even know what it was. Even the people who, who were, were not outside to remember what it was like prior. This is probably where the disconnect is for some people is that you weren't outside when I was outside. So when I'm telling you, yo, we used to dunk basketball with the milk crates on the fucking street lamps before the firemen and police officers told us we couldn't do that. You think I would be crazy if I told you we used to play basketball in the middle of the street and cars didn't run us over. You would think I was crazy because anytime you see someone going on the street where you live, niggas get hit by cars. And, I, and I'm telling you, no, when I used to be outside, we used to be able to put the milk carton up in the middle of the street, shoot the ball, and everyone in the neighborhood knew not to run us over. They would let us get our shot off, in fact, and then to get us to move out the way and drive by patiently. If I told you that, you'd be like, the fuck are you talking about? There ain't no one playing basketball in the middle of the street. But when I was outside, we were. These are reality. These are facts. So I use that metaphor to explain with the music thing. When I was outside, there's a lot of dirty, tricky shit I didn't know. But I knew the ground level of people who are creating and wanting next and wanting to bring new ideas and fresh approaches and getting into the software and computer-based music thing and did all the footwork, who made all the forum posts, who did all the R&D for all these plug-in companies, who did all the emails and all the voting and all the posting and all the polls and all the email support requests to get everything that we have today. You probably wouldn't understand it. It's, it's nothing like seeing a thread that you made on rapmusic.com become a plug-in 10 years later. It's nothing like seeing a conversation you're arguing about with Mr. Ken Lewis become a fucking reality trope on Dave Pensado Place 10 years later. It's nothing like saying, hey guys, hey Mr. Such and Such, the future of fucking urban music is probably going to be something like drumbroker.com. How about you talk, us, talk to us about the process and procedure on how we could process our loops like that so people like Coop the Troop, fucking Frank Dukes, Al Khalik, Nick Brongers, and every motherfucker that's fucking up the shit on radio now with these samples I was talking about 10, 15 fucking years ago, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, it's, it's on record. You can go check it out. You can, you can, you can check the car facts on that shit. But what I'm saying, the people in place was pushing it back, saying, no, that's not going to thing. That, you know, you don't have to worry about that. 24 hours above, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you got a game stage. And da, da, da. No, no, it was none of that. None, none of those were the answers when I was outside. Now we're outside and we're giving the answers. And not only are we giving answers or, you know, possible answers, because there's unlimited ways to do this shit. But when we're giving answers and now motherfuckers are stealing our answers. They're cheating off of our tests, off of our Scantron. I got the blue Scantron, bro. You got the green shit. Stop copying my answers. They're not the same test, bro. That's what I'd be passionate about. Or I'd be passionate about, about the fact that if we're only copying the same shit that's been apparent for the past 10 years to me, when are we going to get new shit if y'all niggas ain't even trying? You see what I'm saying? Like, it, when I was outside, people were trying. There's a lot more people trying, bro. I don't feel that. I don't feel that energy when I click on links and listen to beats. I don't, I don't feel that energy when I see people co-signing who their favorite producer is. I don't think anyone believes that shit. I could tell, I could tell you people ain't motherfucking trying because XXL could put a, tw a tweet on Twitter and motherfuckers would be like, who is the best uh, producer of this year? And motherfucker would say DJ Mustard stuff. You won't even see five posts in a row with the name of the same person. So what are we talking about? Where, where's it, where, where, the, where the fire at? Let's talk about it. You feel me? People ain't trying. Not for real. They, 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 the spirit ain't in there. Or, or the people trying aren't getting the attention. Granted, 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 granted. But they're not getting the attention because the people so-called winning that I'm hating on are the motherfuckers who cheated with SM Zeus and bought all their social media attention. But we don't, we're not supposed to talk about that either. Because motherfuckers are getting hundreds of millions of plays on YouTube every day, but they can't sell physical copies of their record. Because millions of people love them so much, but they can't convert a hundred or a thousand true fans to buy a t-shirt. Come on, does that make sense to you? Like, so many people love your song, but not 
10% want to buy a t-shirt? Does that make sense? Like, guys, do the math on that. If you have hundreds of millions of plays and that song is that popular that that many people play it, you're telling me you can't convert 1% on 1% to physical merchandise or to, to concerts and ticket sales? Come on, that sounds retarded, bro. That conversion rate is even better for fucking products on Facebook Market and IG Master Place. Can, can you imagine if an ad got 100 million views on YouTube? You guys are sick in the head, bro. The excuses that we use to prove that they're not cheating is dumb. But I get that. They're younger people. They're stupid. They're, they still believe in this fantasy. It's not a fantasy. It's, it's common fucking sense, bro. And as, as Mr. Payne said, common sense isn't common. So I say that to say it's, it's real spooky out here when you, when you confront that energy and deal with it. But, it, but you, you, to be honest with you, you probably don't even need to focus on that. You probably don't have to focus on what I'm talking about. I do. Face, I see you. Yeah, you get it, brother. You get it, brother. You get it. Yeah. After the, after uh, the whole conversation about SM Zeus got hot, and I'm assuming some of the popular podcasts may have got wind of it, and they kind of nudged it. Our good brother from North Carolina, J. Cole, he put those bars in the song. Um, you start to see a lot more hinting that people were aware of that. And then we have the most mid-year for, I want to be very clear, mainstream urban music that we've ever had ever. Because I'm tired of people saying that, yo, there's so good music out there, you just ain't looking. My nigga, I'm going to say this one last time because it's, 2020 is almost over and I'm done. I'm not going to say it no more. Motherfuck, we have a mainstream Artists in music industry making mids. Me looking for it is the antithesis of what mainstream means. If the mainstream is mids and it's called mainstream, I do not need to look for mainstream music. Mainstream music is mids. Oh, you're not looking for it. Bitch, one more time. Mainstream music, meaning the mainstream of flow of energy of our music and the best of the best, the highest paid of the highest paid, the published of the publishers, the signed of the signees are making mids. How the fuck am I going to look somewhere else for it if the mainstream is mids? The mainstream is mids. I know someone's little cousin Kiki who got the fucking Roland Phantom S from the gr garage of the grandfather is out there fucking up some chords right now. I know that. I know that the mainstream is mids and we don't fix the mainstream by pontificating on who Wonder Girl retweeted on fucking SoundCloud. That's not what I'm talking about. I knew there was nice niggas who weren't on the mainstream my whole life. That's who I'm inspired by to create the, the underdogs, the unsigned people. I get that. I said the mainstream is mids and niggas start talking to me about Jim Jones album. No disrespect to our brother Jimmy, but he wasn't an A-list artist when Dipset was out. What are we talking about? Why is our mainstream mids? Answer that question. Why is it mids? Can you admit that it's mids? Come on, the, hot, the, hottest, the hot, hottest rap group that came out this year, it didn't even come out this year. Your boys from Griselda got Rock Marcy swag, right? They took the Rock Marcy type beats, did the New York rap thing, went forward, got the cosigns from, you know, the, uh, Dill the Derringers, Alchemist, and the, our other boy from New York who's on Rock Nation, um, your boy who always be in the goddamn track library, uh, Joey Badass and them, white dude with the glasses. They, they got all of them to produce for him, right? And mind you, they do this with a social media following of 30K followers, right? Our hottest up and coming rap group, group phenomenon, whatever, has 30,000 followers. I want y'all to, I'm gonna do this again because y'all probably missed what I just said. <laughs> Griselda and them. I've been watching this with CMP since the beginning of the year. These boys came out on my radar at 16,000 followers. 
They have all this noise, all this traction, all this energy from the mainstream people in the offices. And they have 30,000 followers. They go to concerts and sell out shows with 30,000 followers. There's niggas who is making all this noise or making all this stuff with hundreds of thousands of followers. How? It's fake. So even if I'm looking outside of the mainstream, if the mainstream is doing the humble numbers and everybody else is not getting real numbers, why would I even, bro, it don't make sense. It, th that's the thing. I'm applying common sense to it. I'm not, I'm not going on the, the feels. I'm talking about common sense here. But I say that to say, so I don't know if y'all remember on my Spicy Sunday's conversation about Griselda a few months ago. I had said something to the effect that Griselda needs to branch out for more modern production if they want to be commercial or superstars, right? I don't know if y'all remember me saying that, but I remember saying that to CMP on the camera. I'm saying the thing that they're going to have to do is find a new sound because that, 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 uh, I couldn't afford the drum stems type beats work good for album cuts, but it's not going to cross them over into the mainstream. This is exactly the point I was making. All of a sudden, within the last week, Griselda members in a motherfucking studio with Hit Boy. I was like, bro, of course they're in the studio with Hit Boy. After I said what I said about Hit Boy. Come on, guys, like, stop playing with me, kid. Stop fucking playing with me. They know that I know, bro. I'm tuned in, tuned in, bro. Like, I'm locked in, bro. Like, come on now. Come on, bro. Come on, dog. Come on. Come on, fam. It's common fucking sense to me, though. It's common sense to me. And that's what happened. Go to Benny's page or whoever. He's in the studio with Hit Boy. It's the funniest thing ever. It's the funniest thing ever. I was like, God damn. If they're not watching Spicy Sundays, they're hacking my mind. And if they're not hacking my mind, this is the Matrix Brothers. I got questions for them niggas because I got questions about Sense8 and how it works. Because there ain't no way the world this small that I'm always right. That's what irritates me too. People be like, nah, MG, you know, I have a different perspective or, you know, point of view from you, which is fine. I I'm not, I'm not against that. I, I, I'm in value. I love that people can give me a different point of view in, in certain situations where I'm receptive to it. But when I'm locked in, when I'm right, I'm right. Motherfuckers be acting like I'm guessing. And that should be irritating me too, bro. That'd be irritating me too. People be acting like I'm guessing. Like, bitch, you guessing. Woo! You was right. Yeah. I got enough of those, bro. So, I'm just saying. I think, uh, this is the middiest of mids year for music. This is the most uninspired I've been for music. It's the most uninspiring year. It's the, it's the best year of my life, personally. But it was the worst year of my music life. So, it's all up for beer. All I see is upside. All I have is positive intentions and pure intentions for the future because I don't think they could fuck it up worse than they fucked it up. I really think this, the fake numbers and SM Zeus and the secret stuff, the stuff that's not even SM Zeus but probably darker, like the blogs and the paid accounts and all that shit, I think that's what really fucked up the music industry. They're going to try to harken back to like 10 years ago and talk about some pi Napster shit, but they were on the upswing three, four years ago after Chris Brown and Rihanna figured this shit out. They were on the upswing selling out tours five years ago. So how did that shit drop again? They didn't drop again because piracy came back. Fuck out of here. Nah, they were hacking, they were cheating, and motherfuckers stopped investing is what happened. Is what really happened. It's a true story. So hopefully people are coming back and reinvesting. And um, Benny and them can afford some hit boy beats and goddamn, we'll get a fucking hit song or we'll get a song with a dope-ass music video. Maybe we'll get a feature with an R&B girl who can actually fucking sing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe dudes will make a track for the girls instead of barring everyone to death. You know, maybe we'll get some of that back. Maybe we'll get that three hit formula in 15 B cuts with Derringer like we should get. Maybe we'll get these formulas back. These things that never not worked since we're comparing Blueprint to Stillmatic this year. You feel me? Since that's on the timeline. Let's think about what made those special. The two singles. But anyway, I'm out of here. It's MG the Future. You know what I'm about. Until next time. Peace.